Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there, welcome back. So, uh, if you hear strange noises in the background, it's not Zeke, it's not Sassy, they're not dancing on the roof of the trailer. It's actually Mother Nature letting off some rain. It does, it sounds like about a million little birds doing the jig up on top of our roof. Yes, and hopefully you guys will hear us nice yes. and clear. Yes. As we get a major downpour. Major downpour. So as we see, China strikes again. World's first human case of H10N3. Bird flu sparks avian influ influenza outbreak fears yet again. Another plague upon the land, perhaps. Perhaps, we don't know. We never know with these fine dining wars. Well, what's interesting is Cindy was trying to view it and see what we could get from the guides and stuff. And you're getting that this is one of those rare times when something's kind of cloaked. It is. It is. It was really annoying. The more I was trying to zero in on the middle and get the vibration of what's going on so I can translate it, the more it was scrambling my emotions so that I wouldn't be able to make any sense of it. So I, it, it's weird how they've cloaked it because the harder I try, the more confusion that comes. So they know something. Well, you know, and that, for me, that makes me take a little bit more of a serious look at it and keep an eye on it. Uh, in these times, obviously, Many people are waiting for another shooter to drop, another book to fall off the shelf, another chapter to be written. Yeah. You know, however you want to put this in this great <laughs> drama, this great, yeah, drama. Yeah, this great script that we see playing out before our very eyes. 41-year-old man from the eastern city of uh, Zhenjiang developed a fever and other symptoms, was hospitalized back on April 28th then was diagnosed with this particular strain of bird flu on May 28th, a month later, but is in stable condition and is said to be discharged, right? So that's all good. Health officials reassure risk of large-scale transmission, as far as the public goes, is low. None of the 41-year-old's 40, <clears throat> close contacts have contracted it as well. So this is a low pathogenic or relatively less severe strain of the virus in poultry. Tests showed the virus was of avian origin, but there have been no substantial infections of bird flu since H7 and 9 killed about 300 people in 2016. The strain is not a very common virus, according to Flip Clays, regional laboratory coordinator of the Food and Agriculture Organization's Emergency Center for Transboundary Animal Diseases. He said there have only been approximately 160 isolated of the virus reported over the course of 40 years, mostly found in wild birds or waterfowl in Asia and a few areas of North America. None has been detected in chickens so far. And they're going to analyze the DNA. As we know, you know, the food supply has been getting whacked, whacked, whacked and hacked. And, you know, we're talking about hacking and hackers. Hackers go after meat and prompt supply chain fears again after a ransomware attack on the world's biggest steak supplier. We were talking about this yesterday. Uh, there's talk about, their, you know, again, everybody is, I think, starting to put two and two together here. You know, I think more and more people are waking up, smelling the coffee and saying, what's really going on here, guys? Right. You know, right. and again... There's a lot going on, and we've been basically, we started to do things the way I used to do them when I first started the channel, uh, because when I first started the channel, I was doing a lot of other things as well, and didn't have like as much time to do two, three videos. Same thing now with seeing so many people working and helping so many people with en energy work and uh, spiritual coaching, things along those lines, diet, nutrition. Uh, that we've gone back to this format, but I really think it's this format's better when we, instead of breaking it down into earth changes and then what's happening geopolitically and, and such, when you see all this together in a flow like this, I think it does help the, you know, the bigger picture, mm -hmm. you know, uh, this, this, again, this, this is a huge, huge food supply, food chain company that just got hacked 
Mm -hmm. you know, and it's another blow. You know, when they're suspending production, you know, this is one after another after another. And, and there's many layers to this. Um, as you can see, on one level, yeah, this is apparently, in our opinion, country against country. As uh, it's very, it feels very, very much like we're sitting in 1938, maybe. Hopefully not 1939. We'll have to see. Um, but it does feel like we're in that time frame where there's so much going on covertly uh, that's going to be just out in the open soon. We do have some good news over here from the UK, though. No new deaths from the plague upon the land for the first time since March 2020. Wow, that's great news. And, you know, let's hope things can go back to the old normal mm -hmm. you know, instead of the new normal. How about tomorrow? Just putting it out there. Actually, we need to do much more than even accept the old normal, even though for many, the old normal is paradise compared to the new normal. Mm -hmm. By the way, we have a gigantic 100 meter large sinkhole near Puebla and highway collapse in Michoacan. Earth is tearing apart in Mexico, and that's actually where my great grandfather went, uh, came from. As you see, look at the size of that. There's a lot of real earth changes starting to happen besides all the artificially flavored ones. Mm -hmm. There is, there really is. And, you know, it's time to kind of pay attention. We got to watch where we're at. How How is your weather changing where you're at? Are you guys able to look into the past and, you know, try to get an idea on how things in, are changing and how fast they're changing? It's something we need to watch. And this is still expanding at 66 feet deep, and the locals are nervous. Mm -hmm. And so according to the first investigations, the large dole line was caused by a geological fault, fracture or zones of fractures between blocks of rock. They described the hole in the ground as a matter of enormous risk. Yeah, I'd say so. It's pretty ominous mm -hmm. looking. It's, it's huge. I mean, look at the, how little those people are compared to that big hole and with all that water in the bottom. Can, can you imagine if that was an area where houses were densely packed together? Oh. That would have been, you know, just horrible. Mm -hmm. This just began forming last Saturday. Uh, at that time, no more than 16 feet in diameter. It grew to 197 feet in 24 hours. You know, I don't think you'd have... Uh, you wouldn't be able to get all the belongings out of your house if your house was sitting on top of there. Probably not. Mm -hmm. And it's 328 feet and still expanding, guys. You know, this is part of the times that we're in. We have everything going on. All the changes getting pretty obvious. Rare level five warning for disrupted snow issued for parts of South Africa. Now, again, it depends on what you're used to. They're talking about six inches of snow. And in some areas, like... If you got six inches of snow in Miami, that would cause a, cause havoc. Oh, yeah. But many people might not realize that in in past periods of time when we've had glaciation, I mean, it's been totally frozen over there in the Everglades completely. You know, the changes that are coming are enormous. And then, of course, you know, we have all that augmentation going on. We see Tropical Storm Blanca forming well to the southwest of Mexico. So we got two named storms so far before June 1st, first time since 2013. Uh, you'll have to keep an eye on this as far as Hawaii, but it doesn't appear that it's going to be anything big. It's just, is it a sign of what's to come? And so we're talking about apparent lasers going into cannons. Here they put a drone crashing into the molten lava of Iceland's Oh, yeah, that <laughs> freaking flock or flop. <laughs> she, I did it. I, I, I'm going to get her a translating job. That's yes. it. Yes. Yeah. Bagra Dalus Fajad. That's think. close. I was close. Okay. I'm finally ready to say it. Uh, yes, this is pretty mesmerizing. I mean, the power of nature and her ability to rework herself. Because, you know, the earth's going to. Keep going onward and upward. Mm -hmm. So we need to make sure we're going onward and upward too. But at the same time, we do have to be aware of what's going on here, guys. 
U.S. raises concerns over Chinese military presence at Cambodia naval base. All right, so we have Cambodia there. And here we have the Pentagon warning Middle East countries against security cooperation with Russia and China. Hmm. We're putting the partnerships with the U.S. at risk. Hmm. And not many people, I think, really are aware of just how many troops from Russia, China, and the U.S. are all over Africa. As you see here, RT reports from the thick of war in Central African Republic as Russian instructors aim to help the local troops bring lasting peace. You know, uh, Cindy had a craving. She wanted to watch some Star Wars. She said, let's watch some Star Wars. I want something lighthearted and, you know, just uh, something to just veg out to. And we said, sure. And, of course, they do that famous line, I'm going to bring peace and prosperity <laughs> to everyone in the Republic. Yeah, you know what that means. Mm -hmm. It's The statement always brings the opposite. Mm -hmm. When they talk peace, they mean war. When they talk prosperity, well, they might mean prosperity. Well, but they're going to prosper. Exactly. But the people that are looking at this stuff going by, do you think they're prospering? Hmm. Yeah, you know. After a decade of fighting warlords and lawlessness, Central African Republic is building up a capable military to achieve long-desired peace, and Russian instructors exclusively interviewed by RT are key to that mission. So this bloody civil war has been ongoing since 2012. Do you know how many bloody civil wars there are on this planet? It's all part of the machine. This, you know, M-I-C. That is not just centered in the USA. I mean, this is a global machine. You know, if you're able to bet on both sides, you're going to kind of always win in a way, if you know what I mean. If you know what's going on. The Russians are coming. The Russians are coming. Yeah. And meanwhile, the locals are suffering. And we've talked about the people in Yemen that are suffering. There's people in other places that are Suffering as well. Places, places that you probably didn't even hear of, never even heard in your life. Over 90% of people in war-hit Tigray need food aid. The UN's World Food Program says hunger levels are increasing in the northern Ethiopian region as it appeals for $203 million to scale up the response. I always found Ethiopia fascinating. And uh, my daughter, uh, she had a best friend that had come to the U.S., immigrated from Ethiopia and you know I've always been somebody that loves exploring different ethnic cooking so it's such a delight to taste some of her cooking the culture is interesting too and when we look at migrations of people too because if you look at India in northern India you'll find a lot of blue eyes and, and lighter skin not the case in southern India and the people of southern India many believe genetically are, are closest tied from, you know, now, of course, you got 23 and me and all these other programs that are, you know, analyzing everybody's DNA, everybody they could get a sample of. Uh, you know, who knows what they're really pursuing there as well. Uh, but we see that, like the Tamils, you know, they, they come from this area. A large portion of them come from this area or is it vice versa? Because, you know, we also know that that whole idea, many people are starting to say, uh, we don't believe in the out of Africa theory anymore. We don't think every human came out of Africa and migrated across the world. And anything that is mainstream, uh, you know, we got a question. We really got a question. If you're not question, questioning, you know, everything that's given to us in the mainstream at this point in time, you know, it, it's time to shake out the cobwebs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It really is. I mean, it's time to open up and understand. So, you know, let's please send our prayers and best intentions for these people in this area. 5.2 million people, 91% of the population need emergency food aid uh, because of war ongoing. And I truly don't believe that we didn't have this system in place. You know, I've done some traveling, not a, not a ton through different countries, you know, but enough. And I really don't think that the average people of the world really want all this conflict. 
It's not what I'm seeing. No. Not what I've ever experienced. Yeah, they're just like me and you. We just want to live our lives in peace and be happy and find that yummy space in our lives and enjoy our life. If we want to be nice and kind and you know, even put on rose-colored glasses a little, we could say that the leadership of this world is absolutely atrocious and pathetic mm -hmm. and should be completely given the pink slip right away. Mm -hmm. Now, if, if we want to be maybe a little bit more of a realist, we might say, how can anybody fail so badly? How could, how could all these institutions fail so miserably? If we want to be looking at things in perhaps a little bit of a, you know, cynical light, so to speak. And by the way, Belarus bans most citizens from going abroad. The illusion of freedoms, you know, in so many countries is just that. It really, the illusion of freedom on this globe is just that. It's an illusion. You know, maybe some of the freest people on the globe are, are still tribes in, in the Amazon or some other places where they're, they're not touched by this system so directly. But, you know, all that's going to be going by the wayside as we see Chinese artificial sun experimental fusion reactor now set a new world record. It's, it's obvious what we're seeing here that there's, you know, there's a shift and we've been talking about this shift. Now, I've known this shift is coming ever since I was 19. Back in 1984 is when I first started to clearly get visions. As a kid, I was in school and I was doodling things about these times. I was doing little stick figures and stuff, mm -hmm. you know, about what was coming, you know, making little drawings of UFOs and things like that. By the way, Treasury confirms Biden plans to hire 87,000 new IRS agents, enough to fill national parks twice, all the national parks. Hmm. It's more than his uh, hometown of Wilmington, Delaware. The population there is 70,000. 86,852 IRS agents. Now, I hope the bill's going to go to the IMF and the UN. Mm -hmm. Not to us. Because, you know, look at who do they really report to. Mm -hmm. One way companies are concealing higher prices, smaller packages. This is something else that, I mean, I've noticed. Have you guys noticed this over the years? Mm -hmm. Oh, definitely. I've noticed that over and over again. It's it's almost humorous, really. Yeah. Uh, being a personal trainer, fitness, nutrition specialist, and you know, that being like one of my primary focuses in years and decades past, I always kept track of, you know, macronutrients as well as micronutrients. And, you know, like tuna cans were like almost twice the size that they are now, just as a, for instance, everything keeps getting smaller. This is how, you know, you go and you pick it up and you look and you say, oh, well, $2.99. I think I paid $2.79 last time. Not so bad. But if you notice that, you know, it's six ounces now instead of eight ounces or 12 ounces instead of 16 then you get the the bigger picture here because this is how these inf inflationary prices are being uh, kind of disguised in at least in some certain markets. Mm -hmm. Most definitely. And we've been talking about mysterious uh, booms, mystery booms, mysterious uh, explosions for years now. North J North Jersey town puzzled by mysterious explosions. And uh, they sounded like explosions, even knocked items off shelves. And no one could pinpoint the source of Memorial Day weekend booms that were hurt and felt in Glen Rock neighborhood. An officer responding to report of several loud bangs that shook homes Saturday at Rosemary Court heard a series of explosions, police chief Dean Ackerman said. However, they appeared to be coming from a distance away, he said. Backup officers, firefighters, PS and G, PSE and G crews all converged. On this neighborhood, surrounding towns were also notified. Utility workers found no immediate defects in the area. More boom boom reports followed just after mid midnight near Oakland Place and around noon on Waldron Avenue. Fairlong police joined their Glen Rock colleagues checking the industrial area that borders the borough. Nothing was found there either. Responders were back on Romary Court. Around 3 p.m. Sunday, after a resident flagged down the fire chief, saying the door to her pool heater had blown off. Interesting. PSCNG was recalled to the area, 
The crew found that gas meters at two homes weren't large enough and needed replacing. However, it remained undetermined if this was the cause, I believe she said. Borough authorities coordinated with their county colleagues to explore other possible causes. State officials notified as well as staying tuned. Interesting, interesting. I wonder how smart those meters were. Mm. <laughs> you guys, you know, there's so much that you guys will pick up on. And now, you know, hopefully, thankfully, I think uh, more and more people that have been sleepwalking are awakening. And this is atrocious. We have a burning ship covered beautiful beaches in plastic snow. Sri Lanka faces another environmental disaster. So this is toxic debris from a fire aboard a container ship. And it's blanketing miles of its shoreline. Big time maritime disaster, far from over, billions of plastic pellets washing up on beaches 75 miles to the south. With all this going on, do we wonder why sperm counts down, you know, 60%? Do we wonder why fertility rates are dropping through the roof? It's all part of the fact that, you know, this whole system is basically... It's very self-destructive, to say the least. It's almost like it's kind of set up, so to speak, with a self-destruct mechanism that is, you know, situated for a certain timeline. You know, this civilization will self-destruct in 6,000 years. Mm -hmm. It's kind of built into the system, and the, and the dogs might go crazy because UPS is here, guys. Just wanted to warn you. Uh, yeah, Sassy's giving a warning growl. She senses something in the ether. Um, I just wanted also to share with you guys, because many of you guys may know that Cindy is exceedingly gifted and talented uh, and exceptional, you know, in her ability to see and sense beings from the other side. Um, I think she's maybe one of a hundred, but that's, you know, and obviously in my heart, she's one out of a quadrillion. Um, but she is so amazing, but I've gotten visions from the guides too. I just haven't always seen them the way she sees them. And, you know, she could communicate with them like that. I have to kind of get myself into a, a certain frame of mind an open receptivity, and then pictures come through. Uh, dreams will come through sometimes, sometimes more often now than in the past, it's just more like more direct. Uh, and I think that's because everybody's abilities are going up. As long as we avoid that one certain thing, we're going to keep getting more intuitive. We're going to keep having more of these quote unquote paranormal abilities, which are actually normal, natural abilities, especially for when we come out of the Kali Yuga. So this I had put up on January 17th, 2018. And I just was sharing with you guys what I've gotten for over 30 years about you know what is on the timeline. And I do think that timelines can be changed. And I think you know there's timelines out there that the powers that be are really trying like crazy to manifest. So in this one, you see the title, this is on evolutionary visions of the future. Alien invasion, U.S. invaded by China and Russia, question mark. And I also talk about the breakup of the states as well, because I've seen that the states are going to break up. And I do think that is in the relatively near future, as we've gotten from the guides now, we're looking at probably next year for you're going to see legislation uh, that's actually out there as the great divide between the left and the right and the you know the different forces that are at play here in the country uh, are going to be very apparent and there's going to be certain leadership that is not going to go along with other leadership as we've seen with uh, florida and texas but there are others as well south dakota for instance mississippi we could go on and on you know the great divide is happening and we also have seen these eyes in the sky, you know, eyes in the sky. I didn't understand what I was seeing as a kid. I was seeing something not too far off like this. And this is way back in the 80s before even drones existed. 
And now I could recognize that these were drones that were watching us everywhere we went. And, you know, so it all of a sudden made a lot of sense to me. I also saw what would look like a, an alien invasion. And, of course, many people are have been waiting for years for that blue beam alien invasion scenario. And whether or not it'll actually be, uh, you know, our own forces inside there or our own forces perhaps with their allies uh, inside there or whether it's, you know, going to be more of, um, you know, non-man technological event, we'll see. But I had seen it. I just didn't understand it. I understood, too. Um, well, I mean, there was a vision of something, you know, the red planet in the sky. My, my daughter had that vision and shared it with me in 1996. Yeah, she woke up terrified and said, there was this red planet in the sky and it was trying to suck you up to it. And she was terrified of it. And, you know, I know what she was seeing was, was what we would take to be Nibiru. And then, um, you know, disclosure. I also had seen basically like this. I saw troops coming out of um, helicopters being, you know, dropped down in mass and the U.S. being invaded. And I was in a place that was very warm. And when I first saw this, I was up in Connecticut. So I, I had not moved to the south yet hadn't lived in the Carolinas or, or Florida yet. And so, you know, the topography and everything was like that. And I saw mass migrations of people. And instead of them being immigrants from Latin America trying to come in, uh, it was quite different. You know, there was mass migrations of people here in the States. In particular, I saw people from Southern Florida trying to get north as troops that had invaded and they were in uh, the Everglades and they were working their way north, uh, going to strategic points. And they were showing me this yesterday too. Um, although I think what I saw yesterday, I'm not 100% sure, but I, I really feel strongly it was Australia where I saw mass migrations of people. So I, you know, I did want to share all this with you guys, you know, because I do think that we are Unfortunately, on their timeline, this is what's planned to come. So we have to really wake up as many people as possible to what's planned. Because it is, it's a plan. It's a script. It's, it's one thing after another being put in place in order to, to manufacture this particular outcome. And what, how can we get around this script? I think the only chance is in waking up as many people as possible uh, to what's going on and putting enough of our collective focusing power, our intent, into not letting this happen, waking up people around the world, because it's really going to take people that are in the seats of those jets to say, I'm not firing on them. The people behind these buttons that, you know, have cruise missiles at their control to say, I can't go along with this. The people that are controlling the drones to say, no, this is not what I signed up for. And also, you know, real people in positions of power to say, I don't want this negative karma. I don't want this on my hands. I, 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 you know, I, I'm done with working for this dark energy that has enshrouded this planet i i think that's exactly why they put ai in charge of everything though you know so that human beings whose heart chakras are getting larger won't be in a position to make these decisions yeah that's a good point too and then we hear the reports of you know the russian and the chinese uh, ai controlled armies that are being built and we've seen them you know we saw Basically, the equivalent to those Boston Dynamic dog uh, robots that you may have seen walking around that are a couple feet long. Well, we saw four of them on you know a, a semi that were over in Las Vegas, not too far from the military base, and they were you know bigger than my full size pickup truck. You know, and they they were exactly that. They were things that could walk. I mean, this was pretty, it, this freaked me out when I saw it, you know, it was, here it was on the side of the road in Vegas, really close to, to the, you know, to Nellis. Yeah, it was crazy. 
but th these things are being prepared because they know people are going to wake up and people are going to refuse to go along with the plans and more and more will and then exactly as cindy said that's that's where they have this ai and they're building you know just like in star wars right instead of the clone army you know they're building the drone robotic army uh to do what humans will not do but remember we're spiritual beings this is one brief entry interlude in the experience of our consciousness because our consciousness is eternal as we've talked about that true source true prime creator true god with the big g lies inside every single one of us and that's just a fact how could you deny that for those out there that have been taught that god is omniscient omnipotent and omnipresent it has to be inside of us and again god's not just a he or a she it's way beyond all that mm -hmm. absolutely and people are waking up to this more and more every day and some are struggling <clears throat> with their current situation and wanting to step outside the box but they're not quite sure if they're ready and the good news is is if you're searching you're going to find the truth. So keep searching, keep putting out the positive vibes, keep prepping, be ready for whatever comes, but you know, keep your hearts high because ultimately this dark power that has shrouded this globe is not going to be able to hold on. As you know, we go biblical, you know, it's, woe to you, O earth and sea, because Satan comes to you with great wrath, knowing his time is short. That's exactly where we are right now. Mm -hmm. Time is short. And so we must endure because ultimately we will see the manifestation of basically heaven on earth for those that will keep the faith, so to speak, and keep the faith not in a dogmatic way. It's like keeping that, that fire burning in the heart chakra of love and compassion and understanding that this is all part of moving towards unity consciousness. As we were sharing with one of our brothers out there, we're talking to several brothers today. Brother John, Brother Robert, we love you guys. A little shout out. You know, 5D is uh, ahead of us, but 6D is most definitely the place where we really find unity consciousness. But 5D is a heck of a place to have a good time. And we'll shout out for Brother Levi, Levi too. Mm-hmm. Guys, thanks for being part of the family. Make sure you're subscribed. Have the bell clicked. We appreciate your support on, on Ko-Fi and Patreon. Anybody that needs to make an appointment, it's evolutionaryenergyarts at gmail.com and E-E-A-R-T-S at protonmail.com. God bless and namaste. Namaste.